What's going on guys? It's me, Shikashu. We are back with another Uma Musume. And first things first, Merry Christmas, y'all. Y'all probably didn't expect me to post on Christmas, but I did announce it that I would. And then I did post on Thanksgiving Day as well, but Merry Christmas, y'all. So I won't blame you guys if you are guys are too busy to watch this video. So no worries, no worries at all. We'll just be doing the usual in today's video, except today will be Hoko Tarumai for us getting ready for the League of Heroes. And luckily she does have the Kawasaki green skills. So that's one thing. Uh, but here we do have a lot on stamina for our inheritance simply because gotta reach 1200, right? So here it is. And then pretty much the same setup as a Guri Cap. Yeah, pretty much the same thing, same cards and all that. So no need to make any changes there but other than that let's just jump right into the jump right into the episode overview before we get into the comments because the comments will probably have uh stuff about the episode there too so i'll keep it nice and simple though since it was pretty much a straightforward I mean, pretty much all the episodes are pretty much straightforward. <laughs> so we shall see what we talk about here. It's going to be pretty, like, like I said, just straightforward to what I talk about. So we'll be fine. Uh, so we started off the episode, obviously, with Kida um, announcing her retirement from the Twinkle series. Saying that she will be racing in the last two races of the year before she retires. And yeah, everybody looks like they were pretty shocked about it. But I guess if they were paying attention in the. Was it the Fault to No show? They probably would have realized it a little bit. Other than that, it seems like everybody was just shocked at the announcement and all that. Uh, obviously, what am I trying to say? Oh, uh, Royce and Royce finally decided to speak. And I think it was pretty hilarious that everybody was like, I get it. I understand. <laughs> you know? I mean, what she said was didn't make sense. But I feel like it's pretty hilarious that her first line would be describing like the reason why Kita chose this moment in time to retire. Other than that, she seems just pretty normal. Pretty normal character who I guess just speaks at I don't know, the most ran not the most random moments that when she feels like it's the right time to speak, I guess, would be the right thing to say about her. But after that, we just pretty much just got everybody reacting to it. Crown reacting to it in front of uh, Cheval. Saying that she's going to miss her. They've been racing since the classics, basically, because they are in the same generation. And seeing her sh train struggling and all that, what was it like three laps during that one scene? And she was struggling. So they're really, really showing us that she's really gone beyond her peak. It's kind of sad to see, but you know, as you could, as athletes are, that it will eventually happen unless you're like LeBron James who you know tries to fight father time but it's all good or who is fighting father time but it's all good uh other than that yeah everybody was just pretty much pretty much reacting to it or talking about it we did get a flashback on when Kita first started helping out at the marketplace area. 
pretty nice to see we finally got to see like how it all started over there rather than just leaving it the way it is but i mean i would have been fine if they didn't show it it was just nice to see that uh backstory no what else what else oh when um cheval's sisters went and <laughs> Founder, founder sitting and asked her to go eat and then they were just suddenly talking about how um, she's just been thinking about Kita and how she was like you're lucky to have two more chances to go try and beat her or race her something like that which is pretty nice but I guess the main part we should be talking about is what <laughs> the race itself Even though I pretty much knew the outcome of the race, it still felt really nice to see it. Uh, I honestly, during the end of that race, you could, I could, I could at least honestly feel the emotion that uh, Cheval was feeling. Kind of, you know, kind of just reminding me of like, being on a sports team and all that back in the day just kind of gave me those kind of vibes the way she was speaking like how what was it i literally just saw the episode so i'm trying to remember what she said it was something like even though she was like i hate you but it wasn't like she hated hated her it was more like at least this is the impression i got and she didn't hate her for like bad reasons i guess she simply hated her for immature reasons as she um pretty much said that that, that uh she kita made her realize how immature and pitiful she is so yeah she didn't hate her for any bad reasons from what i'm understanding it was more so because they were opposites and i kind of feel for her because uh believe it or not i'm not i'm not an extrovert at all uh if you see me like around my friends i'm probably the quietest if not the quietest i mean i i, I think not i'm realizing i'm probably the quietest when it comes to my friend group at least so i kind of could relate with her in a way being kind of an introverted personality i know it probably may not seem like that but that's just the truth <laughs> that is just the truth for you guys to know and aside from that it's just like her wanting to beat her this whole time using her excuse me if you guys heard that just randomly came out um her using Kita has an inspiration to try and beat her, try and push her forward. Pretty much, it's it's pretty relatable because I'm pretty sure a lot of athletes do this and all that. So, pretty relatable. I would say this race is this episode is really nice. Um, I kind of wish there was more. I don't know. I feel like they did enough. Kind of felt like. When they were talking about Dio's race, they kind of truck in a way. I felt like they're possibly just beating around a bush because they were pretty straightforward with it. But I kind of get it. He doesn't really want to, I guess, talk about it or whatever. Because it was very, like, it wasn't really talked about her race, at least. As we all know, this series is practically um, based on Kita, so it's pretty understandable, I guess. I don't know, you could really do see her um, struggling while racing and all that, so it's kind of nice to see that at the same time. And then her realization, I guess before that, um, I think the song in the background when... Cabal was having her moment. 
was a nice touch. It kind of showed like um, how important Ida is to Cheval. Hence the fact that she didn't really hate her, but you know she she loves her in a sense. You know, but that was nice to see. Song in the background was nice. But after the race, when she made that realization where she's like, that's right, the Anima Kina is my last race, it's kind of just like, it just kind of hit me. I was like, dang, we're at the end of the series. <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty, you know, pretty emotional, I'd say. And the fact that she was like, at the end of the episode, where she was like talking to Dai and was like, do you remember when I talked about how it feels to have your to run your have your last run? Something like that. And she was like, it's painful. Painful. So yeah, it's kinda sad to see. Oh, I I guess I didn't mention Duramente and her scene with uh Air Groove where she was like she was too late that sh she couldn't race against her because she promised that she would they would race again. Not that, but honestly, I know the truth behind it, and I feel like maybe someone will mention something about Duramente in the comments, so I'm just going to hold back there until then. Uh, I'm trying to see what other things to talk about. There really isn't much, honestly, other than like the two guys that always like were basically like huge supporters of Kita since they we're watching races with her and Daya in season two. That was nice of them to be like when the other guy asked them, like, what are you doing or what's wrong? And they're like, this is Kita's last two races. We're gonna we're gonna I guess cherish every moment, something like that. I thought that was pretty nice. But still, there's no hint on like what the next, if there is a next season, could be. Because there's really nothing, they really need to show anything like what can continue off from after Kita or anything like that. So it's kind of like, hmm. If there is a next season, what would they make it about? But other than that, I think that's pretty much it for the episodes. Next week, or not next week, this week literally is the week. <laughs> this Wednesday in two days will be the final episode. And honestly, I don't know how long we're going to wait. Like, how long was season two? Season two was what? Two, three years ago? Maybe? Hmm. Actually, when did the game game release? The game released almost three years ago, right? So almost. Yeah, almost three years, I guess. Now about what, two years for them? Two, three years? For them to release season three. There might be another two, three years. <laughs> Unless they have it, you know, ready and they're just like, hmm. But season two was obvious with the ending. There was no way there was going to end it like, like that. But, you know, just let me know your thoughts on possible season four. I don't know. Hopefully there's a season four. <laughs> Uh, that that is the talk about the about the episode. You have any more skills? Speed skills? Cool. I might just end up grabbing this for the sake of having another speed card. Might just grab straight skill as well. Why not? 
All right, so let us go over to commons. So there is a update on from Mr. Next MX, and it seems like he didn't get Cheval because the update was I didn't get her. Goodbye, fellas. It was a good run, 200 plus days. The Yano Road, it's been an honor. Honestly, honestly, I think, I don't think, I don't know if you're going to see this again, Mr. Next MX, but I was going to say maybe give it until the anniversary, at least since it is like two months away. But if you're calling it, then. I won't stop you. It was your decision to make. So yeah. It's sad to see you go. Hopefully you do possibly come back. Who knows? But thank you for your comment. <laughs> or your update on your comment. Do I want to do this? No, I'll do this. Next comment is from Darren Endless, but it's a pretty, I don't know, self-explanatory comment, I guess. It literally just says training level, has the names of um, Falcon, Smart Falcon, Rick, um, Kapana Ricky, Exiguri, and Neo Universe with different emojis. So if you guys want to see that comment, check it out over there. But thank you for the comment, Darren Endless. Next comment is from Tanoki. I think it's me that mentioned having a circle. Pro probably, because I, I actually don't remember, so it's most likely you if you think it's you. I used to think of it separately, but watching Insomniacs after school conveyed a sense of touch through the screen. Nowadays, characters pop up and I'm like, damn, they look like they'd be nice to hug. <laughs> I guess that would be... Yeah, I never... I don't know. I don't think I've thought about it like that, like at all. Well, I guess it might just be a, a you thing. It's all good. By the way, since height is mentioned, I disagree with looking at the literal height of the characters on a wiki. I think the height should be taken relatively to the camera angles in the show as it better captures the intended height, the creator and vision. Well, I mean, you could literally tell that Teo is short. <laughs> and I think they had her like at 411. I think did they have it for 11 let me double check what they have yeah they have it for 11 so i think they got her height pretty spot on i'm not gonna lie she does look like about below five feet <laughs> so i me personally i think even if i look at the actual height, I think it kind of matches up once you put like them standing beside like another one, another horse girl or another Uma. So I think it kind of matches up because when she would stand beside McQueen, which McQueen, I think, was 5'2". Let me check. Uh... Oh. Why isn't it typing? Um, a queen, the five two. Yeah, that she's five two, and you could still see the um height difference. So I, I think they, regardless, you could still see the height as it is. Because how tall is Goldship? She is the tallest one, I think, in Speaker. I think. She's 5'7", and she definitely looks way tall compared to, like, the to most of them. So, I think their heights under Wiki can literally matches up with the camera angles that they show in the show. As long as you could, you know, put them together um, besides a, another Uma. At least that's what I think.
I guess for me, it's because after seeing like the literal height, I mean, I, I rarely do. This was just like, you know, me doing it <laughs> at that moment. But um, yeah, when I thought that she was 4'11", Teo, and then remembering the anime from like anime, I could literally see that she's around that height. If not, she is that height. I guess for me, it's better than just like, dang, dang, all character. Because <laughs> then I wouldn't be able to guess, know what height they are. At least that's me personally, but to each their own. Uh, and I'll just grab some skills to ensure that I get some. Uh... I just realized my speed is low. I was used to like, with my Aguri Caprons, her having like, shoot, a thousand plus nearly like every time when I would train her. And yes, I did not get a good Aguri Cap over the weekend. But other than that, thank you for the comments, Anoki. Next comments. I'm gonna go comments because there's two comments from Nova. I'd say once you become a big Uma streamer, you'll have to limit the amount of comments you can cover. Once that comes, that time comes, then we will need word limit on these posts. Uh, I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is uh, to probably just go over the comments beforehand for the video and just either figure out quick responses or uh, just go 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 over the like important parts. That's probably what I'm gonna end up doing. Sorry about that. So far, a near UF nine Falcon has aptitude in both runner and mid distance. Okay, okay. I think I'm keeping this one for now. Christmas Aguri is somebody I have at 5-star. I already got her base stats maxed. I don't expect training to be hard. Agnes Digital is still a mystery for me. Then I'd say spend most of your time with Agnes Digital. That would prob probably be the best case scenario. And I think we might not win this. Who is this? <laughs> Who is this? We still got a few more chances, but it's pretty understandable with our speed being lower than 900 i guess but i have won it over 900 so we'll, we'll see or under 900 if this doesn't work out then it's fine sadly this is my first run with her so i might have to spend more time <laughs> with hogo tarumai to see if i need to fine tune anything so her growth rate does include speed so that's the reason why i didn't bother using three speed cards so we'll see what happens for me, I don't really celebrate Thanksgiving or Christmas. Same here. Like today, we're pretty much just gonna have dinner. That's it. As simple as that. I celebrated once in the 10 years since I started living in the States. My parents and cousins are all in Taiwan for the most part. I just never had that kind of tradition growing up in Taiwan. Now that I think about it, I don't celebrate that many holidays in Taiwan either. Maybe I'm just ignorant when it comes to these celebrations and feel that society or culture just forced you to partake in such trivialities to fit the norm. If not celebrating them for 10 years kept me alive somehow, then I say F them. <laughs> I mean, no. I would say I haven't really celebrated any holidays, even being here in the States since... Shoot, we haven't really had like a Christmas party with like other family members, like cousins, uncles, and all that since I was a kid. Probably probably like sixth, fifth grade, maybe. And then Christmas just pretty much has been a like normal day with like dinner and gifts, I guess. Thanksgiving has always been the way it is, never really celebrated, celebrated it. At least from memory, it doesn't feel like I have. 
Fourth of July is just another day. You just, you know, <laughs> people around the neighborhood being obnoxious with their fireworks, and they are doing that same exact thing a whole week before New Year's. New Year's, same thing. Don't really celebrate. Any other, any other holidays that I really don't celebrate. So I'm pretty much in the same boat as you are. But while we're, <laughs> while we're on the fetish talk, I have to say the boobas just work for me with some of the umas. Kaicho has moderate size, and I think that's perfectly fine. I agree. Sirius has what I prefer in size. I, I guess I gotta take a look at Sirius. Uh, where is she? Actually, I would. I don't know. I can't judge it from this picture. <laughs> I can't judge it from this picture. But I won't know how to judge it. Um, Duramente has decent size from what I've seen. <laughs> all three. All. Three of these Umas have that personality I do like as well. The Romantic's energy is keeping me from pulling, so I'd say New Year is a skip. There can't be two back-to-back -back measurable events, right? I think I mentioned this earlier. Yeah, I don't think they would do two measurable events back-to-back. -back. Did they release any news? I don't think they have. Have they? Oh, I'm checking the news real quick. I don't think they mentioned anything in the news. There hasn't been a update in the news since the 23rd, so I guess we'll be in the dark until Wednesday. But I don't know about serious personality, but if you're saying they're pretty much like Rudolphs and Duramente then. All right, then. All right, then that's good to know. My stamina is low. Did I not have a st <gasps> Guys, I just realized something. My setup was wrong. My setup was wrong, and I don't know if that was because I just directly jumped in. on, Or it was because I said the setup is pretty much the same as Caps. I think it was that. I forgot to put in the Super Creek card. So that explains my low stamina. That explains my low stamina. I came into this training confident. And I don't even want to count this as my first attempt because my setup is jank. <laughs> Anyways. Um, but yeah, Duramente did kind of give me kind of the Rudolph vibes. Kind of, you know, makes sense why I do like Duramente a lot because I do like uh, Rudolph. It was actually like one of the early horse skills that I did. Like, I admit that I did like, like back, like back in season one. So, yeah. Um, I don't know if there was any announcements, so because I just checked the news you guys saw. But yeah, I don't think there would be two Mezro, um events back to back. That would, that would suck. Then on to the second comment from Nova. Update from Sunday. Just watched the anime episode. And I was not expecting so much emotion from this knowing that Cheval would take the victory in the Japan Cup. Yep. Yep. And that is why uh, the hint was pretty obvious when we were talking about it. <laughs> well, especially when you said it's kind of just pretty much just like how Satono Crown was released the same week she won. Um, I'm glad that the Mega Uma Royce finally said something after 12 episodes. I do too. And even though it was pretty late and all that, I kind of, I kind of liked it. And I just realized I didn't rest as well. So yeah, you could tell I'm all over the place, but you know what? It's Christmas. I don't really care. I just want to go over your comments, <laughs> go over your comments, go over the episode. And you know what? 
I'll I'll make up this run to will I make up this run tomorrow? I I think I should. It would be the most appropriate thing after messing up my setup. So yeah, tomorrow expect another Hokotaramai um run because I messed this up really bad. But a little late, but at least it's something, yeah. The episode was focused on both Kita and Siobhan. I think they did a pretty good job in letting them both express their desire. It's never easy to see the one person you want to beat suddenly just give up and quit. Well, hmm. I don't want to say that Kita is giving up. Those are... Giving up and quitting are... I would say are two different things. Or two different types of quitting, I guess. She didn't necessarily say she was giving up. She said it was real tiring for quitting the Twinkle series, not giving it up. Because then she probably would have kept racing series if she wasn't you know, feeling the way she was. But I get you. Um, Being, you know, competitor or <laughs> being competitive from back in the day. So yeah, I kind of get that feeling as well. I can relate more to Siobhan knowing that she's the opposite of Kita. Same, same. And that she had always resented her for being the way she is. Have I? I guess in a way, yeah. If I did, you know, was more... What? out there outgoing and all that life would probably be different but you know what i stayed within my own comfort zone <laughs> and became an extrovert so or not an extrovert an introvert um but it's comp it's a complicated feeling that's for sure as for my urge to pull cheval i would say she seems more appealing now but not to the point of me pulling her see for me seeing that i kind of felt like i could kind of relate to her in a way the way she feels and you know all that stuff it kind it kind of makes me want to pull for her a little bit more i'm not gonna lie i don't want to pull for her still and i do really like her like outfit and all that i do like her cape as well as you guys can probably also tell i'm not really you know i didn't even do this so I don't really want to count this run since it's already been all jumbled up, but it's all good. Um, I still think they could have done more time developing her lore throughout the anime. Could they have? Yeah, I guess they could. Because even though like Rice Showers is pretty short, she did kind of have her lore in a way. It was worked out. Um, in fact, the violent Uma probably got little to no character development in this season. I would say so myself. I mean, she would pop up here and there, and she probably had like five lines to ten lines max. <laughs> For all the time she's spoken. So she literally was just there. Um, I'd argue that's the weakness of Season 3, and that is the fact that the poster Umas have drastically different levels of spotlight throughout the season. While Kita and Daya got most of the spotlight, Violent Uma is just an afterthought. I'd love to see more Duramente in the training arc. I mean, hmm. I'm trying to think if there was another character that was pretty much just like that. I mean, there's probably a couple characters who they just showed and never really thing, but... The amount of times they did show Royce and Roy, oh, not Royce and Royce, the um, Sounds of Earth and the fact that she was also <laughs> in the o in the opening, you'd think she would have more of a important role in the anime, but it doesn't. She didn't. Literally, Crown was there since the beginning. Um, obviously, Daya, because it is about mainly about Kita, but Daya was also a big part of the series. Uh, Cheval Grand was there more than Sounds of Earth, obviously, because she was basically her rival. 
just never really, I guess, vet it or established it, I guess. And then Duramente, even though he basically disappeared after the Takara's Inen, um, she was still more relevant than Sounds of Earth. I'd love to see more Duramente's training arc too. Well, I, I did, ex for some odd reason, when I say I expected to see something about Duramente in the comments, I didn't think it would be there, but here it is. So, all right, guys. So I thought about it. There might be a weird cut, like literally a weird cut. Literally while I was talking about Duramente because of um, Noah's comment, I decided to cut it out. Or at least like, yeah, while I was talking about it, I decided to cut it out because I didn't know if you guys wanted to know or or if you guys wanted to get uh, spoiled about Duramente. So I decided to omit that and delete that out of the video. This is simply just a reminder for me to, to do exactly that. But yeah, if you guys do, don't mind, then I'll do mention it. I'll, I will mention it in tomorrow's video just let me know in the comments if you guys want to know if not it's totally fine i just had to hold myself back and it's like i said the reason why i do low-key know about these things is because i did kind of low-key get into the whole thing without even trying Ooh, ug3 after my good runs my consistent ufs and then my first run this wasn't a real run to me. It, uh, eh, we'll just leave it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow we'll make that up. Oh, uh, what was I saying? I was about Duramente. But other than that, yeah. I just kind of didn't want to talk about it if you guys didn't want to know about it. But thank you for the comments, Nova. And lastly is... A comment from Ren. It's kind of crazy to think how far I've gotten. I have 19 four star characters in total. And oh my gosh, I got my first UF. It was Taiki who I was trading for the LOH and I was so happy. I might just end up getting Bourbon, maybe even Ace with the Uma Selector. Depends who's on it. And if Gran is on it and I didn't get her, then her. And I'm definitely getting it. This is the most money I've spent on any game. I guess first things first, congrats on getting your first UF. Psyche Shuttle, that's a pretty good one. A pretty good one. I remember when Psyche Shuttle was the first Uma I maxed out speed from what I remember. Which is pretty cool. Uh, but I haven't trained her in such a long time. But because probably won't until like a short distance. <laughs> um, I'd say if Cheval Grand is on it and you didn't get her, then I'd probably use on Cheval Grand. I'd say between Bourbon and Ace, probably use it on Ace over Bourbon because Bourbon, we're talking about Valentine's Bourbon. I guess it doesn't really matter at this point then because then both of them will basically be RNG to pull on the ban on any banner. So I guess it's all on you who you like more, which would probably be Bourbon. But continue on, imagine I get a UE before you. I'm kidding, of course. If you're wondering, Taiki stat, she got like UG7 speed, UG power, and, and the rest are Cs. <laughs> if you get a UE before me, honestly, I probably, if it does happen, it'll probably be because of the board cards, maybe? I don't know. But if you get it before me, so be it. <laughs> so be it. And I do remember you rolling Suzuka, so now you have both. Yeah, I've had the original Suzuka since the beginning. And yeah, with me pulling the Summer Suzuka, that would be both. Day 69 of asking for Nova's to be a friend on Blue Archive 8. Nova. Nova. Ren's been waiting. <laughs> or at least just let her know or something. Uh, jungle pocket for New Year's. 
Where did that... Where did you get that info? Did I miss something? Did I miss something? In... Any announcements that I miss? I swear I didn't see anything. What is this? I see something here. Oh. I just realized February is a sh the the next um CM is a short distance. Tough, tough. Um Yeah, I don't know where you unless you're just guessing it's Jungle Pocket. Because I don't see anything about Jungle Pocket. Any news or anything in the news. I don't think it's been announced it. And usually they put it on the news literally the night or day before on who's going to be the next banner. I'm not sure. But to be honest, I did see that Uma add on for Grand Blue. And, oh wait, I didn't say this part. E, I want Ayabe too, so many characters I want. Same. To be honest, I did see that Uma add-on for Grand Blue, and honestly, that would be the only reason I would truly get the game. Also, congrats, Cheese, for the PC. I have an i3, so I can't do much, but I do have a GPU, and apparently that makes it better. Yeah. Work that PC. Play the games. That you haven't played. It'll be worth it. Uh, the anime episode made me want to cry. I love the moment where Grant kept saying she hated Kida and then she said, I love you. I truly love that moment. Only make me wanting Grant more. Honestly, yeah, this episode literally made me relate. Or like, really get to establish how much I do like Cheval Grant. And I do really like her at this point. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. It was a real. I, I I like that scene. It was a really good scene, or moment of the race. It was like her personal breakthrough, so to speak. Uh, I had the favorite star pull, and I didn't get anything. I'm gonna keep trying, of course, as much as I can. Ryan's hair isn't as spiky looking as original if you put them side by side. I'm just. I'm not gonna look. Um. Yushu Sensei, please get Dura for me. Grand might be where I gamble it all. I'm not using my money. Uh, it depends when she gets released, honestly, because if it's if she's still going to get, you know, if she does get released in February or the anniversary, then we'll have some time to get some jewels. So, but I'll try my best if she, when she gets released to get her, honestly, but I, it sucks because I really do want to get Cheval Grand. Uh, I love when my cat looks at me when I call his name. He's so cute and precious. His name is Pepper, but I like to call him a cute nickname like Peppers, and he responds to it. And yeah, I meant Grass wondered like, what if it turned into a Rainbow Gate? Then that would have been amazing, especially if it, it turned into Cheval Grand. <laughs> Imagine the reason because Kida can't run is because her... <laughs> her heavy mommy milkers were holding her down. I'm kidding. <laughs> Open and close parentheses. That's she's kidding. Honestly, I felt like because she did not look like she, you no, know, they didn't look that big. I would like, and it's crazy how I didn't notice until you mentioned it. But I'm, I don't know. Maybe they just he grew up. Let's just put it that way. Um, I didn't really have any connection problems with Nikki. Then again, I didn't. I did get Naughty to Top Road from the anniversary ticket. So, wait, what? <laughs> How did we go from connection problems with Nikki, but then it continued into Top Road from the anniversary ticket? That was a weird transition, but it's all good. Uh. The anniversary ticket, so... I'm also a thigh person. You should give your thighs to... 
You should give your thighs to me. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Wasn't able to comment on the Aguri video, so I thought I should comment on this one. Thanks for the video, Shusu Sensei. And I might try to train Smart Falcon and Ricky next. All good. It's all good. Um, I think in one of I think in your last comment you mentioned you place HSR. HSR. If you want, leave your UID on your next comment as well, and I'll add you as a friend there. <laughs> so yeah if you want if you want of course so yeah just let leave down your uid and i'll add you you guys are probably wondering why is there another cut well <laughs> simply because um i was pretty much just doing my final checks for the video when i was editing it decided to check if there was any comments for some reason and saw that eugen had commented so i wanted to go over eugen's comment and then i'm just gonna add it make this pretty much the ending of the video. So uh, Eugen had commented, oh, Royce's outfit shown in halftime and first time speaking on this episode. Honestly, her, ep mm, her outfit looked, I wanted to see her outfit on full, but it did look like it was pretty bright. I think it was yellow and some other colors. Uh, Cheval's evolved skills activated on the final straight, which make her win the japan cup what was her evolved skills again let me take a look at that real quick if you're in the first half of the pack during the second half of the middle leg your speed and acceleration will increase bonus speed in 2400 meter races at a random point in the first half of the last break <laughs> after the last for your speed yep her her evolved skills definitely Definitely activated towards the end. Um, the Arima Kinen 2023 result was pretty interesting, and I have, and I wonder if you watched the race. Matter of fact, I did. I've actually been kind of watching it for quite a bit now. That's why I knew about last year being Equinox and all that. Um, the uh the jockey, you oh. Uh, Yutaka Take, I believe that's Yutaka Take, and uh, Lemaire was Christoph Lemaire, yeah, was red, was head to head just like Kita san and Daya from their Arima Kinen battle. Well, they're both jockeys of these, these two Umas before, yes, that is true. Um, actually, Kita's are had two jockeys prior to Take, it was uh, Kitamura and Yokoyama. In 2015, Yokoyama, I think, only did the Arima Kinen that year. And then from 2016 until 2017, when Kita stopped racing, <clears throat> it was all uh, you, uh, Take. And then Take was the jockey for Dudus, who won the Arima Kinen. And then um, Lemaire was... Oh, you're right. Lemer was Daya's uh, jockey. But fun fact, fun fact, Lemer also was Equinox's jockey, like primarily. Like, I believe Equinox's whole career uh, racing, Lemer was the, the jockey for Equinox. I think. I believe so. Um, and also, another fun fact Stars on Earth, which is also. Th the second place one was uh, also Duramente is the sire or the father of Stars on Earth. So fun fact there for you guys. <laughs> um, so that's pretty. Oh, I think I hit my mic. That's pretty cool to see um, both jockeys of Daya or previous jockeys of. Or former jockeys of Daya and Kida were going head to head in the Arima Kinen for this year as well. Actually, it actually made me wonder why... Um, I was going to say Kita, but it made me wonder why Equinox didn't race the uh, Arima Kinen for like, the last of the three fall races to see if they can... If 
he can win all three, but who knows what the... I, I don't rem know if there was a reason or anything like that, but... Oh, well. Oh, well. Other than that, thank you for the comment, Eugen. It's uh, cool to, that you had mentioned the Arima Kinen, because I wasn't sure if any of you guys actually did see it. It was actually a pretty interesting race. I believe that was um, title holder's last race as well. And it looked like... It looked like title holder was a title holder was gonna take it but ran out of gas and towards the end didn't have enough stamina right <laughs> uh but other than that yeah i didn't expect um anyone to mention the audio mckinnon so thank you for mentioning that it was uh quite interesting oh yeah interesting how um both jockeys were also jockeys of kita and dio I think I think I don't know if it was Take. I think Take also um was a jockey for vodka. I think. And then I think Lemaire, I don't know or was it I don't remember. I might be wrong about that. Yeah, I might be wrong about that about that. Forget about it, but other than that, guys, that is pretty much it for this video. That's kind of weird ending off the video when I already ended it already, but it's all good. Uh, if you guys didn't make it this far in this video, I do really appreciate it, especially today since it's Christmas. So Merry Christmas to you guys. And but yeah, if you guys didn't make it this far in this video, I do want to say thank you. If you guys can hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys have done over the weekend. How is your, I guess, also um, how your Christmas is today, depending on when you're watching this video, I guess, but um, how your Christmas was, how was your weekend, um, what else? Any other things you guys want to talk about, we can simply just put it down in the comments and I'll go over it in tomorrow's video. Uh, tomorrow's video would be another Hoko Tarumai attempt since basically in today's video, I screwed up the setup and it was pretty bad to be honest. So I don't really want to count it because it wasn't know the right setup so yeah i won't do any uh, runs before tomorrow's video so i can keep it fresh you know but other than that guys thank you once again merry christmas and i'll see you in the next one peace <laughs>